Steph uh, Kerr mentioned after, uh, a little while ago that he feels the team's kind of lost his confidence, and you can see it, you can feel it. Do you sense the same thing, that there's just something that the confidence isn't there, that the belief sometimes is a little wavering right now? You can describe it however you want. We're just not playing great basketball, um, not giving ourselves any chance to, you know, be competitive those last two games. And um, I don't know, our, the last two starts have been, the last two first quarters have been a little rough. We settled it a little bit tonight at the end of the first quarter. I think it was like 20 to 6 at one point. But then, uh, you know, when you give a team, when you give the other team belief and you give the other team a reason to, you know, keep their foot on the gas pedal, it makes it even harder knowing that we're going through our struggles um, as a team. So. However you describe it, it's got to change. Hey, Steph, at the beginning of this homestand, you guys were 15 and 15. I know 500 isn't where you want to be, but now three games below. What do you think changed in the last two weeks between then and, and now? I wish I knew the answer. We could have avoided you know, the situation we're in. Um, you know, obviously, our defense has not been great giving up way too many points and like I said especially first quarters um, you know teams coming out and punching us first so we can turn it into good learning lessons and opp opportunities for growth but it's not going to happen on its own and nobody's going to feel sorry for us nobody's going to uh you know, help us get out of this hole. We have to do it ourselves. That's the challenge. After the Denver loss on this homestand, you said it, it's, it's frustrating because you were losing what if games, right? Ones that kind of collapsed in the last couple minutes. How is it different after two blowout losses? It's, uh, I mean, same feeling because the I mean Denver game. You played well enough to win, and you didn't. And then these last two, you just get embarrassed. And I think you get to a point where you're trying to like ex explain it away, trying to figure out what can change, like specifically that can help us. And that's you know the conversations that are happening in between games and you know film sessions in the locker room. Um, but it's headed the opposite way, and I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say about it. Just because you know we're not used to this kind of vibe around our team, so we have to acknowledge it. Um, you know, not let go of the rope, as they say, when it comes to our belief that we can just win the next game. But it all, it all sucks. <laughs> Kerr was saying how quiet it is on the court without Draymond and Chris, and you're, you have a pretty quiet game, but moving forward until they come back, I mean, have you thought about any changes since a lot of the younger guys look to you to, like, you know, close the game and just what you're doing? Uh, I mean, I talk, it's it's a different voice, obviously, what, uh, what Draymond does defensively as the the anchor, because, you know, not only is his IQ, his, you know, just defensive presence overall, but he's usually the one that's behind the court and able to bark out commands. Um, and that's he prides himself on that CP the same in the sense of just the, what he sees on the floor. And so when we started the year, <clears throat> I think that was one of the things that was exciting about the the roster we had youth and we had you know things that they needed to learn as we went through the year but we had veteran presence Draymond CP myself that could loom that could uh, be the most vocal and obviously when you're not when they're not on the court it's tough to replace it but it's um, again another challenge for the guys that are out there to try to be vocal, try to talk, help our defense stay connected, intimidate the other team maybe. That's another part of it, and we haven't done it.
you're not the general manager and you know a lot of things are just going on that you can handle but do you almost feel like that trade deadline coming up you've got a certain amount of time to show management to keep things together or they might have to make some major decisions I mean, we have a standard that's pretty evident that if things stay the same you know that's the definition of insanity, right? Keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. So as players and what we can do, our, we have to control our effort, our focus, competitiveness, um, you know, control the things that we can on the court. And like every NBA season, every organization, that stuff works itself out, and you can't allow yourself to get distracted by that, you know, because whether you're – at the top of the standings or at the bottom, there's always rumors swirling, there's always conversations, and it's just a part of the business. And until anything happens, uh, you can't get caught up in it because it would rob you of your opportunity to play good basketball. And, you know, that's, that's kind of where we're at. Steph, after a, a tough homestand, can it be galvanizing to go on a road trip and kind of get a breath of fresh air and, and regroup and then before your next homestand here? It has to be. It has to be. Uh, this is the second straight game that you guys were booed here. How does that make you feel when you hear that? Um, uh, I don't even know what to say about it because I don't want to be prisoners of the moment and understand, you know, we're, we're obviously struggling. There's nothing to really cheer about. So obviously the cheering is booing. We might as well. Um, I don't take it any certain type of way. Um, honestly, I'm booing myself, booing our, our, you know, team in my head because of the way we're playing. So, you know, it is what it is. Fans are going to react the way that they want. Um, it's our job to, you know, give them something to cheer about. And, we have not done that. Great. Cool. Thank you.